What's up guys, I'm Chris and welcome back to the Build Studio. This is my all new channel focusing specifically on 3D printing and other craft related hobbies. Now in today's video, we'll be unboxing and reviewing this K1 Max 3D printer from Creality. Now this is a printer that I've been waiting for since Creality announced their K1 flagship series of printers. And if you've been following my other channels, you might have seen that I did an unbox review and comparison of the K1 Speedy versus the Bamboo Labs P1P in a previous video on my unboxing channel. Now, as soon as I heard that the K1 Max was available, I quickly ordered it, and about a week later, here we are with this printer, which quite possibly might be the biggest competition to Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. Not only is this $300 cheaper for the base unit, but also slightly faster than Bamboo Labs X1C, which has hands down been the best 3D printer on the market to date. So stay tuned and we'll check out this printer and see if it lives up to all the hype. Okay, so outside of this channel, as you've probably already heard, the K1 Max from Creality is now available and on sale for about $900, which is a pretty amazing deal considering that its competition, the X1 Carbon, costs around $1,200 for the base unit. And I know it's a little bit early in the video, but if you do decide you wanna buy one of these for yourself, you can use my link and code in the description section below to get an extra $50 off your order. I'll also include some of the other codes that you can use for other promotional offers available on Creality's site. Now getting back to this printer, just a few days ago, I unboxed and reviewed Bamboo Labs all new P1S 3D printer and it quite literally lived up to the Bamboo Labs standard of quality. Well in today's video, we're going to see how much better this K1 Max is compared to the K1 Speedy that I unboxed in a previous video, which I'll link in the cards above, to see if it compares to the quality and speed of Bamboo Labs 3D printers. And with that in mind, let's go ahead and unbox and then assemble this thing. So this box ended up being a lot heavier than any of the Bamboo Lab printer boxes or the K1 Speedy boxes. This thing is pretty heavy, I gotta say. So let's go ahead and put this on the floor as usual because I don't have much space. And really the box itself with the printer in it weighs so much more than all my other previous 3D printers that I've unboxed on any of my channels, hands down. Okay, so in typical Creality fashion, the first thing you'll see, of course, is a plastic bag full of all the booklets, your Creality stickers, your mascot stickers, which comes with pretty much every Creality device these days. And I love these things, they're, they're so nice. I stick them almost everywhere. Comes with the Creality quick installation guide specifically for the K1 Max, and it is a colorful, pamphlet, very descriptive, in a couple of different languages. So it shows you how to set it up, how to install it, and how to use it. And then lastly, you have your after sales service card, which is basically your warranty information. So we'll probably put that aside and never use it again. Okay, and after that, we're gonna remove, I guess, this first piece of styrofoam, which includes and protects the upper layer or upper lid of the printer itself. And this is real glass, uh, so definitely you want to be very careful with it. So we'll just remove that and we'll put this to the side. Now at first glance, this thing is a lot bigger looking than the K1 Speedy, definitely. And it's definitely a lot bigger than the Bamboo Lab printers as well. But then again, that is a given because it does have a larger uh, print area. I think this one is 300 by 300 by 300, but we'll confirm that once we pull it out. If I'm remembering correctly, that's the specs. So definitely it's expected that this thing is gonna be a lot bigger than any of the other printers that we've unboxed on this channel before. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Ugh. 
Okay, so unlike the Bamboo Labs printers, this one does not come with any filament, I don't think. It's just the printer itself. But we'll confirm that as we just continue to go through the unboxing. This thing is a giant. It's massive in size. It takes up the entire space of my unboxing table. And it is so heavy. Okay, so we'll start by moving this box out of the way so I can actually maneuver back here. Okay, so I'm gonna try to turn this around. Whoa, don't want it to fall off the table. Okay, so right off the bat, we'll take the styrofoam out of the top because that's where a lot of the accessories are. Take this big chunk out first and we'll take this smaller piece out. Yeah, so this is the LCD screen. And we'll just go ahead and remove this little protective layer. It says, before applying power, please check that the three platform board fixing screws have been removed to avoid damage to the machine. So again, those are the screws inside that are holding the build plate down. Just a reminder to remove that before actually using the 3D printer. But the LCD screen itself looks a lot like the X1 Carbon LCD screen, but just a little bit smaller. Okay, and then we've also got the power cord, and I believe that's it in this thing. Okay, and then we've got this thing, which I'm not sure what it is. So this probably is the accessories box. Okay, so I was wrong. This does come with a filament. This comes with one full roll of Creality Hyper Series. Uh, I think this is PLA, right? It's Hyper PLA White. Uh, filament. So it is nice that this does come with a full roll of uh, filament for us to use. Okay, so this is the handle for the front door, which is not pre-installed, so you will have to install the handle itself. And then this says it's the hot end. So that's interesting looking, the hot end itself. And then this is the little shoe for the hot end. But we'll see if this is extra or if it's pre-installed. Uh, this looks like the filament spool. And this is the thing I like about Creality 3D printers is that they do come with these rubber feet that do help with the vibration and the movement while it's printing, which doesn't come on the Bamboo Labs. But there are files that you can download that you can attach to the bottom of the Bamboo Lab printers, which I did include in one of my previous videos and also for the P1S video. So if you're looking those for those feet, and those print files, then definitely check out that video where I've also linked those files in the description section as well. But yeah, so I think I'll complete the unboxing before I actually put these feet on, on this printer. And then in addition to that, you get your little accessory box. So this is the toolbox. You get your uh, cutters, you get your hex tools, your wrenches and screwdrivers, and a little, couple of extra screws. You get your wrench. I think this is the grease. Yeah, this is a, this is grease. You get a glue stick. You get your scraper, USB USB key, and then of course the nozzle cleaner. So we'll just leave that in there. Keep them until we need it. Okay, so onto the printer itself. Let's remove all this sticky tape. Now the good thing to know is the front door is glass but the side panels are all plastic. And then of course the lid at the top is also glass. Okay, we'll try to not get fingerprints on the glass itself, but we will need to install this door handle. Okay, and I don't know why, but I like to keep these little baggies. Let me know in the uh, comment section below if you also keep all of your baggies. But I have a hard time, you know, throwing those things away. We'll go ahead and get the screws in there first. And I wonder if it's premature to put these screws in these little caps or if it's okay to do that first. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of finesse. And I will say the screws are not easy to screw in because the plastic spacer does not allow it to just tw turns with the screw. So you're gonna to have to hold that plastic spacer in place while you're screwing this thing in. Okay, so there's the door itself. 
And the K1 Max pretty much has the same layout as the K1 Speedy. It's just a little bit larger. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything in here. This was just primary to hold the box. Okay, and to install this little LCD screen, you're just gonna take this tape off and then you're gonna attach this ribbon cable to the back of the screen itself. And I'm probably getting fingerprints all over it, so it would have probably been a better idea to remove the tape or the protective tape after I installed the screen. And you just press on it till it clips in. And then you just attach the screen itself using the plastic hooks. And you keep pressing down until it won't go farther and the glass can open. Now again, I do wish the LCD screen for this 3D printer was at the top, kind of like the Bamboo Labs, because this piece of glass right here where it's cut out just lets air flow through and you know, sometimes the glass will get caught on the LCD screen if it bumps loose. So I'd say from a design perspective, I do like the LCD screen at the top instead of at the bottom. Okay, one thing I do no did notice about these Creality 3D printers is the cable protector within the 3D printer itself always comes loose. Every single one of my Creality printers, that little plastic piece that's covering the cables has always come off. So I think a better design for that as well um, is definitely possible. But yeah, to fix that, all you have to do is take this plastic piece and snap it right back on. And as the several warnings there are, you're going to have to remove the three screws that are holding the build plate down. And they're all noticeable because they have an arrow pointing to each of the different screws. And it does look like the hot end is already installed. So this hot end is an extra hot end, which is always nice to have, um, especially because if you print a lot like I do, you have to replace these pretty frequently. So it's good that like other 3D printers, it comes with that extra hot end replacement. So right now we'll go ahead and remove the three screws and then we'll see what else we have to do. Now, just a word of note, that third screw, the one at the back of the build plate is a little bit difficult to remove. You can unscrew it, but unless you've got one of the magnetized screwdrivers or a pair of pliers or something, it's gonna be very hard to remove that screw. So just be cautious of that. But once those screws are removed, we'll just go through and check and make sure we've removed all the tape that's securing everything down. So there's this tape that's securing the blow fan down that we need to take off. And then we've got the build plate, which as you can see is pretty large. So this looks like it's just an engineering plate. I'm not sure if you have to use a glue stick, but I'm gonna assume that it's recommended for this. So you will need to remove the film off the build plate itself. I don't know if this is a film on top of it that can be removed, but I'm gonna assume it is. So this is definitely not a textured plate, so I may try to find a replacement for this because I'm not too fond of these plates that have stickers on them because eventually you're gonna have to remove it and it just tears and everything. And I personally don't like using a glue stick. So I'm probably gonna see if I can find another plate to replace this one. But for now, I'll just use this. But the build plate is magnetized. So there are bolts in the back to make sure that you are putting this magnetic build plate down perfectly and aligning everything just right before you stick it back down. So that's also nice about this printer, okay? And the first thing I also noticed is this printer does have the AI LiDAR on it, which will help you with the accuracy of your prints as well. So that's pretty nice. Okay, I think I've got everything set up. I think the last thing to do is of course put on the lid and then we are ready to print. And unfortunately, I've already got fingerprints all over this thing. Okay, so the lid is now on and it's a fully enclosed system. Okay, so we'll just turn this around so that there's a camera view of the printer itself in all its glory. And then we'll put these rubber feet on, which all you have to do, I believe, is just lift this printer. And again, I'm gonna get all these fingerprints all over the plastic and glass but you just snap them on one by one. And again, these just help from a vibration and swaying perspective to keep it 
from moving around too much or moving with the printer itself while you're printing. Okay, and then last but not least, we're just going to put the spool holder on the back. Although I'm probably gonna print my own spool holder because I don't like things hanging off the back. I'd like this to sit flush against the wall. Okay, so now that we're almost done setting up and before we move forward, I'd like to take some time to thank today's sponsor, Sunlu. Sunlu is a well-known industry brand when it comes to 3D printing hardware and materials. Not only do they carry a huge selection of high quality 3D print filaments and resin, but they also carry and sell 3D printer hardware and accessories, including a lot of Creality's 3D printers. They've got a wide selection that's always priced competitively and at a much lower price than their competitors without impacting the quality of their print materials. Now when it comes to Sunlu, they are one of my go-to suppliers when it comes to ordering print filament and resin. So if you're in need of material, currently they have a huge sale going on for 25 to 50% off a vast majority of their products. Please use my link in the description section below and thanks Sunlu for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so now that everything is set up, let's go ahead and do one more round of checks just to make sure everything is ready for first print. I'm gonna come around to the front of this Okay, so opening this up, it looks like the print head is installed, or the hot end is installed. There's the LiDAR, we've taken the screws out, the magnetic plate is set up, the fans, all the stickers are off, all the tape is gone. I think we're about ready. Okay, so now that everything's set up, let's get ready to print. One thing I did notice, however, is that print head inside looks so small compared to the other 3D printers that I've used in the past and especially because this case is so huge. So the print head itself just looks puny. And then I also like that there is the air filter on the back right behind the fan, although it does seem a little bit cheap, but I do like that you can remove the air filter from the back, so that's nice. So next step is to install the filament, and instead of using the Creality filament, we're going to use the filament that was sponsored by Sunlu because that's what we did in the previous test for the P1S. And I just wanna make sure that this thing can print with other filament that's not from Creality and see what that quality looks like. Just to be a little bit more fair to the other printers that we used, since we didn't use their specific filament as well, uh, and instead use the Sunlu filament. So we're gonna do the same for this printer to test the first print. So I'm just gonna grab that filament so for today's test, and I think we have enough filament left, I am going to take the remaining black filament, PLA plus black filament that Sunlu sent us, and we're going to test print using this. Actually, we'll start by using the Blue Starlight PLA filament that they sent, and we'll test this and print a Benchy first. So I'm just gonna feed it through, and then once it's fed through, so one thing I learned from the K1 Speedy is at the top of these 3D printers from Creality, at, at least this flagship series, this K1 series, there is this little switch at the top that allows you to easily load and then lock the filament down. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you switch that as well so that you can load the filament. So again, we're gonna to continue to push and feed this filament through until it gets to the end. Now this is where I like having the AMS from Bamboo Labs because it does help to load this filament a lot easier rather than doing it manually. Okay, so now that the filament is loaded, we will put the lid back on. So if you do find when you are doing starting your 3D prints that the filament is not loading or it's not feeding, then you're gonna to wanna to toggle that switch at the top to make sure that it's in the right position for you to actually start your prints. Okay, and then we're gonna go plug this in. And what's also nice that I just noticed is there is a network cable jack on the back of this printer. So you can hardwire this to your network aside from just connecting it through wireless. So that's something else that's pretty nice on this as well. Okay, and now to turn the printer on for the first time. Okay, so we are going to select English as the language. We've removed the three screws. Okay, and welcome. Next, we're gonna set up the wireless. Uh, time zone, I'm not sure which one we're at. 
Now that's something that I do wish that they would change is instead of using the UTC time, I wish they would use the actual naming conventions. Okay, so for us, we are UTC minus five hours. I think that's right. Okay, and then after that, we gotta scan the barcode so we can add the printer to the Creality app. So I'm gonna go and do that. Okay. So I'm gonna do that. Oh, I need to go to the Creality app itself. So let's go ahead to go to Creality, Creality Cloud. Okay, and then remove that, scan the barcode. And then we'll just name this thing K1 Max. Then finish. Okay, and then that adds it. I think I probably should rename this device. Okay, I'm probably gonna have to rename the other one uh, for the K1 Speedy because it's misnamed. So we'll rename this to Speedy so that we can differentiate between the printers. Okay, so I'd say at first glance, the, this, the camera on the Creality Max is not as good or clear as the Bamboo Labs, but I could be wrong. Uh, we'll just check that out a little bit later. But let's go ahead and do our first print. See if I can access anything off of it. Okay, so I guess I can. All right, so we are going to do our first print and we're going to print the Benchy, um, which let's go ahead and do that. Actually, let's do it on the screen. Uh, let's do the start, the self check. So we'll do the self inspection and we'll start that first. And let it run through its self setup and self inspection. And for the first print, I am gonna to try to print without the glue stick, and we'll see if the material adheres to the print bed itself. And I will say that so far, this K1 Max is a lot quieter than the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. So far it doesn't even sound very loud, which is pretty nice actually. It's doing its frequency tests right now, the resonancy frequency test. I'm amazed at how quiet it is actually. And I'm not sure if you can hear it from my microphone, but it is actually very quiet. Well, not very quiet, but it's quieter compared to a lot of the other 3D printers we've tried on our it's quieter than a lot of the 3D printers we've tried on our channel previously. Now one thing I'll say about this 3D printer is I do like the design and the layout of the printer itself. It's just got a very nice aesthetic look and it just looks like a very solidly built printer. Okay, so this is where I think things differ a little bit from Bamboo Labs. I went away for, I think about five to six minutes, maybe even more, and the Creality K1 Max is still doing its self-inspection, initial calibration, and bed leveling, which takes a little longer. The Bamboo Labs printer is a lot faster when it comes to this, that's for sure. Now the other difference that I see, of course, is that the Bamboo Labs, when you go from the top model, which is the X1 Carbon, down to the lower model, I guess, which is the P1P, the X1 Carbon has a better LCD screen or LED screen, 
whereas the P1P got that cheap, annoying little touchpad. Now when it comes to the Creality K1 Max and the Creality K1 Speedy, regardless of the level of the printer, they both came with the nice LED. So I think that's where Creality excels a little bit is that they don't skimp on the hardware, regardless of the model type. They may reduce the amount of features, but the standard features such as the LED screen remain the same, whichever, regardless of what the model is. So I think that I appreciate that about Creality. Plus overall, aesthetically, I like the design of the Creality uh, K1 Max and the Creality K1 Speedy. A little bit more than the design and uh, layout of the Bamboo Lab printers. Um, I think they use a little bit higher quality material in the Creality printers. So it seems at least. Okay, so looks like the self test and initial calibration is complete. So for the first test, again, we're gonna use the Twilight Blue and we're gonna test print a Benchy. So let's go down to Files and the Benchy is here. So let's go ahead and print the Benchy using PLA. For the purpose of this, I'm going to go ahead and slow down and turn off the lights uh, so that we can capture the footage a little bit better. Okay, so I would consider this first print a successful print. However, I will say that I did run into problems and it took me like four attempts to print this Benchy. I ran into a number of different problems just doing and setting up this printer for the first print. So I had problems with the filament not running, feeding it to the extruder was challenging, on some occasions the filament itself on the spool got tangled up and there were th some things that I did learn along the way. So first of all, when you are printing with this printer, you're going to need to make sure that you feed the filament through and make sure that the switch at the top is in the unlocked position when you're feeding the filament. And then also you're going to need to adjust the tube so the filament feeds all the way through because there is a good chance that it will get stuck at the top and not feed into the extruder itself. So one is to make sure that the switch is in the unlock position when you're feeding the filament through. And then two is to make sure that when you are ready and you know the uh, filament is fed all the way through to the extruder, that you put it back in the lock position so that you know when you print you won't have any issues. Because in the unlock positions, the filament will not feed. So you need to make sure you put it in the lock position so that it can feed the filament. The second thing, there's this little, I guess, spacer at the back for the feeder tube 
that you need to make sure is actually mounted correctly because if you don't the feeder tube is actually going to run into the honeycomb which will actually snap and uh, fray your uh, filament making it very difficult to extrude and causing it to tangle up as well. Now when you do mount the filament spool you can mount it and feed it clockwise however you, you will have to adjust the spacer and the way the tube is, a is mounted in order for it to feed properly. So by default the way this printer comes I just mount the spool of filament and feed it counterclockwise and then make sure the spacer is set up correctly so that it pushes the feeder tube away from the chassis so it doesn't block or start damaging the filament as it's being fed and then of course the third thing I learned was that because of the build plate that comes with the printer you're going to want to make sure you use the glue stick just so it, it, it adheres to the build plate a lot better um, I'm pretty sure you can do it without the glue stick, but the glue stick just does help to make the print adhere to the plate a lot better. Okay, so before we go and compare this Benchy to the Benchy of the X1 Carbon, we're going to try another more complicated test print, and we're actually going to switch it out to my PLA Plus Black filament, and then we're going to try to print one of my hydroponic components, which is a little bit more complex and a little bit larger and that'll actually tell us how much faster this printer is versus the X1 Carbon. Oh, one other thing before I forget, the K1 Max is definitely a lot quieter when it comes to printing than the Bamboo Lab 3D printers. It's still a bit loud, but it's not as loud as the X1 Carbon, especially the fans. The fans on this one is a, are a lot quieter and it just seems overall that this printer itself is much quieter than the X1 Carbon. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go ahead and load up the PLA Plus Black and print a hydroponic module. So, exactly what can you expect from this K1 Max 3D printer from Creality? Well, currently it is the fastest 3D printer on the market with a max print speed of 600 millimeters per second and a print volume bed size of 300 by 300 by 300, which is a combination you can't currently find anywhere else. When it comes to the print head, it can accelerate up to 20,000 millimeters per second squared and it has a flow rate of 32 millimeters cubed per second. Now, in addition to that, this printer also has an AI LiDAR that scans and validates the quality of the first layer of your print to make sure that your print starts off right. If it finds any defects, it automatically pauses the print and asks you for the next steps, whether you want to continue or quit the print or start all over. It's also got an AI camera that allows you to monitor your print job remotely as well as record time-lapse footage of the print itself. Now, like most advanced printers today that are available, it also has auto bed leveling and a number of different fans all throughout the chassis to make sure your prints turn out perfectly. The K1 Max also has your standard features such as power loss recovery, a filament runout sensor to notify you when you run out of filament, a built-in air purifier, and built-in support for pretty much every type of print material there is. All in all, this printer is feature rich and completely capable of handling any print job you throw at it and all at an amazing price of around $900. Okay, so it is now the next day and we have completed the Benchy test print using the Twilight Blue PLA filament from Sunlu. And then we also went ahead and did a secondary test print using the PLA Plus Black filament from Sunlu to print one of my hydroponic tower modular components. And just from the looks of it, the Benchy turned out very nicely. Uh, you can, I don't see any kind of imperfections and it's very hard to notice the layer lines. So overall, I think this is considered a success and I think from a quality perspective, it is super nice quality 
and definitely comparable, if not even better than the Bamboo Lab quality of prints. So here in my hand here, I do have the Bamboo Lab uh, printed uh, Benchy using the Twilight Blue. And just looking at them, you can barely tell the difference at all completely. They both are exceptionally high quality with little to actually no flaws at all. So I'd say from a comparison standpoint, at least for the Benchy, the K1 Max is equally as good as the Bamboo Lab when it comes to print quality, but faster in speed because this Benchy took about 15 minutes to print on the K1 Max, and it took about 18 minutes on the Bamboo Lab's uh, X1C. So the X1 Max definitely gives the Bamboo Lab's X1C a run for its money. And it also comes in at a cheaper price as well. So next, I'm gonna take a look and compare the quality of the modular component that was just completed today, this morning, on the K1 Max, and then the one from the X1 Carbon. Okay, so from a comparison standpoint, I'd say they're pretty equal. Um, I'd say there are just a few more flaws on the K1 Max print than on the Bamboo Labs X1C print. However, very comparable when it comes to quality. Now I'd say there is this one little imperfection here on the K1 Max where that doesn't exist on the X1 Carbon version. But overall, it's very difficult to notice any kind of difference. And as you can see, they are virtually identical. And they do lock together perfectly. Now while these test prints were printing, I did write out a list of things I noticed about each of the different printers and wanted to call out. So when it comes to the Bamboo Lab X1C, it's definitely got a better camera as you can see from the uh, time-lapse video. Uh, the K1 Max, the quality of the camera is not as good as that on the X1C. X1C also has better software. I do like the interface uh, from Bamboo Labs a lot better than I like Creality's app um, overall. Uh, the X1 Carbon also does have an AMS, so Bamboo Labs does have that advantage because they do have that AMS which allows for multicolor prints. Plus it's just a lot easier to feed filament into the, the Bamboo Labs 3D printers as well. It's a little bit more complicated to, to load filament in the Creality 3D printers. I also do like the fact that the Bamboo Labs 3D printers do come with a textured build plate, which makes it a lot easier to not only print on, but also to clean up afterwards. I'm not a big fan of glue sticks at all. Although for the mod modular hydroponic tower component, I didn't really use the glue stick. I just used what was existing already. And there were some parts of it that weren't even glue. There was no glue stick at all. So it still adhered to the plate pretty well. But overall, I'm not a big fan of using a glue stick. And then the last thing, of course, with the Bamboo Lab, again, it is easier to load filament. Now on the flip side, where the K1 Max shines is one, it's quieter, and that's definitely noticeable that both the printing and the fans, and overall in general, the printer is a lot quieter. The K1 Max is also a lot cheaper, so you do get more bang for the buck. It is slightly faster, so with the max print speed of 600 millimeters per second versus the max print speed of 500 millimeters per second for the Bamboo Labs printer, it is slightly faster. And that is noticeable, especially on larger prints. And then the thing that I like most about the K1 Max is that it also has a larger print area coming in at 300 by 300 by 300. So I'm definitely gonna be able to print, let's say my Iron Man helmets and larger prints on the K1 Max than I will be able to on the X1 Carbon. But hopefully at some point, uh, Bamboo Labs will come out with a printer with a larger print space. Overall, I think that the K1 Max also looks better aesthetically. I think the design of the printer and the case itself just looks super sleek, super contemporary, and super modern. So I do like the design of the K1 Max a lot better. 
Anyways, this is my initial unboxing and first impressions of the K1 Max. I do hope that you found this video helpful and enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure you support this channel by smashing that like button and subscribing. Please also make sure you ring that bell icon because I do plan on doing some comparison tests between this printer, the Speedy, as well as the uh, Bamboo Labs printers in the future. So please make sure you do come back and check out my videos. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.